Hello and welcome to Dr. Katrin Preller, who's with me today for a short interview. Katrin Preller is a senior researcher, psychologist and neuroscientist at the University of Zürich and as a lecturer at the Yale University. At the Insight Conference, she will speak on mechanisms of action of psychedelics and their implication for psychedelic assisted therapy. Katrin, welcome. Thank you for being with us today. Thank you very much for having me. Pleasure. We prepared four questions to you, which I think we should go through one by one. And I will start with asking you, how did you get into psychedelic research and why did you stay after all? Yeah, so I was always interested in brain chemistry and what happens on the neuropharmacological level um, when we feel things, when we do things, and how are these processes changed by certain substances. And uh, with psychedelics, I thought that I have really found the window into this neuropharmacology and be able to study emotions and behavior on a receptor level. Um, and that brought me into the field and um, I was really excited and still am. And that's what basically made me stay is um, this mechanistic insight into the brain, this basic science, but of course, also the clinical applications that we're developing right now. And I think um, psychedelic science to me is just as exciting as it was on the first day when I started this work. Right, striking the balance between clinical application and, and understanding the mechanisms and, and, and bio neurobiological effects. I think we're right at the po on the point of where insight tackles these phenomena this year. So thank you for this exciting contribution. We're looking forward to hearing more about the mechanisms in neurobiology of psychedelics. It seems also that we're, we're definitely right in the trend of psychedelic research and their application and therapy taking hold in society, especially in, in the Western world, you could say. Um, still, I think there are many misconceptions. That's why I want to ask you, what would you say is one common misconception that people have about psychedelic research and about your work specifically? Yeah, one misconception that I encounter repeatedly is that people seem to think that understanding the mechanisms of action of these substances is just a purely academic question. And in my opinion, that is not quite true. I think understanding the mechanisms of action of psychedelics will be highly influential on how we use these uh, substances therapeutically as well. So uh, what, what are your assumptions, how, how or from based on your findings, how exactly would you conceive of the, the um, mechanisms of action of psychedelics and how they can be harnessed in therapy? Yeah, that is exactly what my talk is going to be about. So I don't want to spoil it quite yet, but I do think that depending on how these substances work in the brain, um, it has different implications for how we conduct the therapy, for what we do during the session, for what we do after the session, um, and also what kind of techniques we use therapeutically um, in the whole process. Right. Yes, we're still in, in an explorative state too, I think. The psychedelic therapies are only starting to take hold, and I imagine we'll, we'll still see a lot of development in the, in the years to come. Having said that, um, looking back at the recent years, um, how would you say the field of psychedelics research, psychedelics therapy um, has changed in the past five years? And then connected to that, maybe how did, what do you expect, how do you see changing in the coming five years? Yeah, in the last five years, um, a lot more people have entered the field. And I think that is a great development because I think together, we can really leverage these substances and find out um, what they do in the brain, advance the basic science, as well as advance the therapeutic science, and eventually hopefully be able to treat people with uh, these substances. And for that, we need a lot of research. There are still many open questions. And right now, I think we are in a phase where these questions um, are starting to change a little bit as well. So we're 
getting more and more clinical data right now, which look very promising. But that opens new questions, which we'll, we will need to address in the next five years. And some of them are, for example, related to the therapy and how we can optimize our therapeutic model. And I think um, these questions will become more and more important as we move towards um, larger clinical trials. Yes, definitely. The, the trend, I think, is obvious towards, towards clin more clinical trials in recent years. And um, larger clinical trials will be what will, will really bring us forward. I, I think so, too. And um, I, I take that as a very positive assessment of yours in the development of the field. It, it is. It is. I think it is a very exciting time to be doing this research right now. And um, yeah, it will be exciting to see where it leads us within the next years. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm also excited to be <laughs> involved in this and being here at the Mind Foundation, working together with um, personalities and, and, and experts like you and your colleagues. Um, speaking of colleagues, um, as you know, Insight will feature more than 40 uh, presenters and we'll have talks, discussion panels and other formats. Um, what among those that you have seen um, caught your attention in particular? This, given um, the experience in the recent years with the Insight Conference, I am absolutely convinced that all of these talks will be excellent and will be really interesting. And I can only recommend watching as many as possible. Um, so I don't have a particular talk in mind because I'm excited about all of them. But what I'm really looking forward to is catching up with the people that I haven't seen in a long time by now. And also, of course, meeting new people who have entered the field in the meantime. So I'm really looking forward to having the social exchange again. Absolutely. And during times of the pandemic, I think we're all longing to having social interaction. Well, um, even though you cannot split yourself to attend the different tracks at the same time, the good news at least is that we're recording all of our talks and they will be made available to all ticket holders and of course to our speakers afterwards for, uh, for viewing. So that is the good news I think about having um, yeah, multiple tracks that you cannot attend. <laughs> Absolutely. Cool. Um, thank you very much for, the, for answering these questions in detail. And we're very much looking forward to your talk and meeting you at Insight. Thank you so much. I'm looking forward to it.